Ezekiel 46. Thus saith the Lord God, The gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut six working days. But on the Sabbath it shall be open. Well, that's the reverse. Because usually the gates are shut on the Sabbath because no one can do any business. That was in Nehemiah. And then they're open in the six days. On the day of rest, this gate is open. And in the day of the new moon, that's the first of the month, it shall be open. And the prince shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate without. So there's the reason. And shall stand by the post of the gate. And the priest shall prepare his burnt offering. The prince's burnt offering. And his peace offering. And he shall worship at the threshold of the gate, the prince. Then he shall go forth, but the gate shall not be shut unto the evening. And even would be 6 p.m., that's when the Jewish time starts. You don't, don't get on this Roman calendar thing. The Jewish day starts at 6 p.m. and goes to 6 p.m. the next night. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate. The people shall worship at the door of this gate. Without. So they're standing outside. That's what, without. They're not inside. And shall stand by the posts of the gate. And the priest shall prepare his burnt offering. And his peace offerings. And he shall worship at the threshold of the gate. And they shall go forth. But the gate shall not be shut into the evening. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate. This is worship service on the Sabbath, which is the seventh day. You're not going to be worshiping the Lord on the first day of the week in the millennium. Before the Lord on the Sabbath. And the new moon. The Sabbaths are the seventh day. And the new moons as the beginning of the months. And the burnt offering that the prince shall offer unto the Lord. Now, there's some people say that prince is Jesus. I really don't know. On the Sabbath day shall be six lambs without blemish, and a ram without blemish. And a meat offering shall be an ephah for a ram. We took up the measurements the other night. And, the, and a meat offering for lambs as he shall be able to give. We're in the millennium. Everything is abundant. I don't know why that particular expression is there. And a hint of oil to the ephah. In the day of the new moon, the first of the month, it shall be a young bullock without blemish, six lambs, a ram, and they shall be without blemish. And he shall prepare a burnt, um, excuse me, a meat offering. These are all found in Leviticus. An ephah for a bullock. An ephah for a ram. Do you see why we, we did the measurements? You can't go to God and offer something that's lacking. You've got to have a standardized measurement. Because what would you do today? 
Would you give God a three quarter? Or would you be able to give him a 15 millimeter? Would you give him a, a cup? Or would you give him a liter? They're not the same. In the millennium, we have one measurement, one standard, one balance. And you won't need a, uh, 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 that those little charts, you know, how many liters go in a gallon, and you don't you won't need that. And when the prince shall enter, he shall go in by the way of the porch, the porch is outside the gate, of that gate that is open, that looketh to the east. And he shall go forth by the way thereof. But when the people of the land of Israel shall come before the Lord in the solemn feast, there are seven of them. He that entereth in by the way of the north gate to worship shall go out by the way of the south gate. And he that entereth way of the south gate shall go forth by the way of the north gate. So you don't go in and out the same gate. It's an orderly fashion of no traffic jams, if you will. He shall not return by the way of the gate whereby he came in. But he shall go forth over against it. Well, look at that definition of the word against found in the Bible. Against means opposite. And the prince in the midst of them, when they go in, shall go in. And when they go out, shall go forth. In the feast and the solemnities of the meat offering shall be an ephah to a bullock, an ephah to a ram, and to the lambs as he's able to give. Another weird, because in the millennium everything is abundant. And a hint to an oil to an ephah. Excuse me. Phew. Ugh. Now, when the prince shall prepare a voluntary burnt offering or peace offering, voluntary unto the Lord, one shall then open him the gate that looketh toward the east, this is the gate we started with, and he shall prepare, wait, open up the gate. So this offering, verse 12, is a weekday offering. This is not on the Sabbath. Because remember, when we start off this chapter, the gate is open on the Sabbath, and it's only closed on the evening at 6 p.m. And don't open back up to the 6 p.m. of the Sabbath. He shall open him the gate that looking toward the east, so it's been closed. He shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offering as he did on the Sabbath day. See that? Then he shall go forth and after his going forth one shall shut the gate. So there is a possibility that that gate will be open during the week when the prince comes in with a voluntary offering of a burnt offering or and a peace offering. Thou shalt daily prepare a burnt offering unto the Lord of a lamb of the first year without blemish. Thou shalt prepare it every morning. Thou shalt prepare a meat offering for it every morning, the sixth part of ephah, the third part of a hint of oil, to temper with fine flour, and a meat offering continued by the 
perpetual ordinance of the Lord. Now, perpetual is, is that ordinance is the law prescribed in Leviticus. It's forever. Thus shall they prepare the lamb and the meat offering, the oil, every morning for a continual burnt offering. And thus saith the Lord God, if the prince give a gift unto any of his sons, well, if it's Jesus, the church, if it is David, He's got plenty of sons. But not all going to be in the millennium, but he's got two sons. If it's Solomon, he's got sons. It shall be their possession by inheritance. So in other words, if, when the prince gives this gift to the, his sons, you can't take it away. But if he give a gift unto his inheritance to one of his servants... Now let me, I got Webster's 1828 Dictionary, and I know on Facebook you can't see it. But look at this definition. I got a reason. A servant differs from a slave. As the servant's subjection to a master is voluntarily, the slave is not. Every slave is a servant, but every servant is not a slave. A servant does it because he wants to do it. A slave, he has to do it. Now, I've been many months now not involved in the street preaching of the farmer's market in Daytona Beach because of health concerns. But when I went to, and I want to get back to it, the Lord allows me, I wasn't forced to do the street preaching. No one held a gun, a weapon, blackmailing for me to be there to get the gospel out. I wanted to do it. Now, if your church makes you do things, makes you do things to get to heaven, to be pleased with God, that you have to do it. If you're not part of our church, you're an anathema and you go to hell. You're a slave. You say, well, Stiley, why did you bring that up? Because when I hear the modern Bibles be read, where my King James Bible says servant, their Bibles say slave. I'm not a slave to Jesus Christ. I'm, I want to do it. Now, there are some Baptists, there are some Christians, their church makes them do it. That's a slave. And there are some Christians who serve the Lord out of joy because they want to, because of all that Christ done for us. And you know what? There's a reward coming. Now, when Jesus Christ left the heavenly throne, of God. Question is, by what I just read to you in Webster's 1828 Dictionary, was Jesus Christ a servant of God or was he a slave of God? What's your modern Bible say? I'm afraid. I, I don't know what they say that far. But I'm afraid with what they would say. Because Jesus Christ willingly went to that cross. When he prayed in the garden, he said, Not my will, but thy's will be done. God didn't force him. God didn't tell Jesus, All right, if you don't go to that cross, son, you're not coming back to heaven. Jesus said at any time he could have called the legion of angels and he could have gone to heaven without men's souls. Every slave is a servant, but every servant is not a slave. There's a big difference. So here's a servant of the prince, and they want to do it. 
Then it shall be his to the year of liberty, Jubilee. That's coming back. You know, it's funny, some churches will, we have a Jubilee. Are you under the law? No, we're not under the law. Find me Jubilee in the church age period. After it shall return to the prince. So the prince's gift to his children, it's their possession. The prince's gift to the servants at the Jubilee, it's return. But his inheritance shall be to his sons for them. Moreover, the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance by oppression. Okay. To thrust them out of their possession. Now, under the millennial law, you're not going to have intimate, intimate domain. You're not going to be able to take somebody to court and sue them to get what you want by bribing the court system. There have been, and I read, accounts that a person has died and left in their will. And I want this. And I think the case was a park or something. I want my money to go to this park. But it is to be not used by any colored children. And they go in there with their lawyers and they fight that. And the legal bounding will is exhausted because of people's prejudice. Of the free right that we have to believe what we want to believe in America, which is crap. I believe, you know, if a company or somebody has done you wrong, you get Benefits to the wrong. But when you're foolishly have hot coffee spilled in your lap, you need a slap upside the face rather than a billion million dollar lawsuit. You can't have the government, in another case in Connecticut, they wanted a piece of property for a highway. And that guy willed that property to his family, and when he died, the state of Connecticut overrode, overrode that will. And the children didn't get nothing, and they got that property, and the highway was never built, or finished, should I say. That's not going to happen. There's going to be no tyranny of the government. I believe with the case of David and Bathsheba, I believe that he forced herself on her being the king of Israel. Listen, kings are not like president. You don't tell a king no. Esther said, hey, Uncle Mordecai, I haven't been called into the king's throne room in, in I don't know how many periods of month. And if he don't hold that scepter out for you to touch it, your head is going to be here and your body is going to be over there. That's tiring. When you got the government, both Democrats and Republicans and the other parties, they're, up, they're lying to you. And the media's lying to you. And the medical field's lying to you. And you don't know who to believe. That's not going to happen to millennium. There will be no oppression. But he shall give his sons inheritance out of his own possession. 
that my people do not scatter every man from his possession. They're going to get the land and they're going to stay in the land. They're going to belong in the land. And any land given by the prince is going to be the prince's land to his son. After he brought me through the entry, which was at the side of the gate, into the holy chambers of the priests, we've read about those before, which looketh toward the north, and behold, there was a place on the two sides westward. And they said unto me, This is the place where the priests shall boil the trespass offering. And the sin offering, where they shall bake the meat offering, that they bear them not out into the inner court to sanctify the people. So if I can say, quote, unquote, there is a kitchen area for boiling and baking. And the priests are doing it. Then he brought me into the other court and caused me to pass by the four corners of the court. And behold, every corner of the court, there was a court. I can't even picture that. Inside of a square, there are four squares. Rooms. In the four corners of the court, there were courts joined of 40 cubits long and 30 broad. So that's a rectangle. Except for the, except for the, the book I just had with the college education where they were telling me that a rectangle is a square. And my sister tried to tell me that it, it, it's a square. No, a rectangle is you got four sides, two are equal and two are unequal. That's a rectangle. In every corner of the court, there was a court. In the four corners of the court, there was joined 40 cubits by 30 cubits broad. These four corners were of one measure. In other words, all four of these courts, these, fam uh, the, these uh, rooms, were 40 by 30. And there was a row of building round about them. Round about them four. I ain't completely gone on this one. And it was made for boiling places under the rolls round about. So we got the boiling places of verse 20. And there are specific places for the boiling of the sacrifices. Then said he unto me, These are the places of them that boil, where the ministers of the house shall boil the sacrifice of the people. Man, there is so much, if I can say, cooking and burnt offerings and fire going on. Can you imagine the smoke? And the steam and the aroma and the singing as you approach Jerusalem. 